Yeah, well, the origins of black minstrelsy, the, the first black, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. The first, the first black man to wear, the first African-American performer to put on blackface, the first black one, is probably William Henry Lane, 1840, a black dancer. He, um, the story goes that P.T. Barnum saw this guy dance and wanted to put him up on New York stages. Um, but he, the New York audience wouldn't hear of a black person on stage. So he put blackface on him and, pretend, and made him pretend to be a white dancer. So he was um, a black man pretending to be a white man, pretending to be a black man. And he wore blackface. He became a hugely popular dancer. Shortly after that, he dropped the pretense of being white and, and displayed himself openly as a black man. And at, right after emancipation, uh, a troop of a, a, a Union colonel uh, in Macon, Georgia, organized a troop of black minstrels. Now, white faced minstrelsy, I mean, black faced minstrelsy, the whites did, had become extremely popular. They, the first minstrel show was 1843, and then it swept the country, and minstrelsy was the most popular. Um, the most popular entertainment in the country. So this uh, troop of black minstrels called themselves the Georgia Minstrels. They were all former slaves from the Macon area. Um, and they were, and, the, and a guy named Charles Hicks, a black entrepreneur, took over them. He, uh, I think he had had experience as, in a white minstrel show, because he was very light-skinned. So he had put on blackface and performed in a white minstrel show. With that experience he taught the, the, this troupe, the, the Georgia Minstrels, how to do minstrelsy. And they became more popular than any of the white minstrel shows. And, they, and so for the next 30 years, black minstrels and white minstrels commanded American entertainment with often the black minstrels being more popular than the white minstrels. And then our book, uh, Darkest America, is named after a black minstrel show from the 1890s, which um, which was probably the most popular entertainment of its day. What happens in the, 19th, in the 20th century when the black minstrel show and minstrel shows in general, you know, I wouldn't say they go underground, but they're no longer the most popular American entertainment, and they are no longer um, in the mainstream. People are still attending. Um, we just met a woman today who in the 50s would go every year, her grandmother brought her every year to the uh, Silas Green from New Orleans show. I mean, people went uh, to see these shows, but you know, they weren't uh, something that everybody knew about. But even when blackface goes away from the mainstream, there is a black minstrel tradition. There are certain um, characters that appear in the minstrel show, certain routines, certain jokes, certain uh, comic tropes that black comedians continue to do. Um, kind of the gentleman who becomes synonymous with it in the 1930s is Lincoln Perry, who stage name was Stephen Fetchett. And Stephen Fetchett is taking the, you know, uh, slow-talking, slow-witted caricature, and he's bringing it to film, and uh, also to stages, and he becomes extremely popular. Uh, he really brings something to it that is so uh, distinct that a lot of imitators, he actually ends up losing his contract in part because there is a number of uh, performers doing the identical act and, that, and they end up getting jobs after him. Well, the, the thing about hip hop and minstrelsy is it's not, there's different things that keep the black minstrel tradition alive. Some of them are actual performance things that people keep on doing. But the other thing is the tradition of black critics accusing people of minstrelsy. So the real associations between hip hop and minstrelsy have to do with critics accusing rappers of being minstrels. And it's not always accurate. I mean, it's almost never totally accurate. The, the two times when this came up the most were the gangster rappers. Uh, Spike Lee, Stanley Crouch, there's so many people that said that the, uh, the gangster rappers were the new Amos and Andy, they were minstrels. This was the 21st century minstrel show. This came up over and over. And that's because uh, the gangster rappers were utilizing 
negative stereotypes, stereotypes of brutality and criminality. Um, but these were not stereotypes that were in minstrel shows. In minstrel shows, the criminality was stealing a chicken. It wasn't murder. You know, uh, minstrel shows were not about threatening people. One thing that's a little confusing is people remember the blackface from Birth of a Nation and think that, and think that this is, you know, that was, Birth of the Nation was borrowing the language of minstrelsy and using it for something else. There would not be a dangerous, rapist, blackface character in a minstrel show. Minstrel shows had no white characters in them usually, and uh, it was about comedy. So the fact that minstrel shows were all about comedy and gangster rappers, even though they used humor, were not funny. They did not want to be perceived as funny or fools. They, you know, the, there's a mantra, I ain't no joke, or I, you know, because of that, that's a, a bad comparison. But the reason people make it in part is because it feels like that. Some people would watch a stereotype or some misogyny or something that they felt was demeaning. They would see African Americans perform without dignity and it gave them the same feeling they got looking at a blackface performer. But the other uh, more recent accusations of uh, minstrelsy and hip hop have to do with the Southern rappers. And what that has to do with, um, I mean, part of it has to do with just, you know, Northern rappers and West Coast rappers wanting to, you know, feud with some, I mean, Southern rap is more popular than any other rap now. But it also has to do with an embrace of Southerness. Um, you know, contemporary Southern rappers exaggerate their Southern drawl and their slang. And that, to some people, sounds like um, uh, dialect. And dignity, and like, Oh, you know, gangster rappers would never act foolish or, or worry about looking crazy. They wouldn't do that. But somebody like Lil Wayne does not mind acting crazy or looking foolish. And this kind of uh, stepping away from dignity reads to some people like that. And also Lil Wayne with his uh, grill does a giant teeth bearing, you know, grin. And that's always been symbolic of minstrelsy. But it's not a perfect comparison, but the way it comes in, I mean, there are constantly going to be accusations of minstrelsy and hip-hop. I don't think that, I, I find that, I would find that hard to believe. I would find that, that, you know, that, that seems to me to, to say that, that, that black audiences are just going to fall for whatever's out there. You know, it, 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 it seems, I, I think it's more complicated than that. I think one thing that, that we're forgetting is that there's, it, in, the, in the minstrel show in the, and in the coon song, you get a, a space that's free from white oppression. Uh, there's, the, the slaves in the, in the minstrel show are portrayed as happy. There's no whites on stage, there's no white oppressor, there's no master. They get to eat as much as they want. They get to. They don't have to work hard. The audiences were subject to tremendous oppression um, in their daily lives. When they went to the minstrel show, they could feel happy and free, just like the people on stage. They could identify with them in that way. Uh, I think that is one of the reasons why the minstrel shows were successful with black audiences. The audiences are influenced by media, and we know that that people imitate the media. So I mean, there, there's definitely truth to that. And one of the legacies of minstrelsy um, and anti-minstrelsy is that often there were only negative um, black images on screen, and then when these images would get removed from the screen, like when there would be when they get Amos and Andy removed from television, you know the NAACP and the newspapers organized, it, it, they just go cold turkey. There's no black people on TV for many many years, you know. So it, a lot of times, what would happen would you would have these negative images or no images. So, you know, obviously there's, there's some truth to that. But then what also always happens uh, is people like the lowest common denominator. I mean, one of the more interesting stories on television is the story of the show Good Times. This is a show that was conceived uh, to be an uplifting show. It was gonna show an intact family. Esther Roll would not do the show if they made her a single mother. They had to have an intact family, they had to do all of this, and they start this show, and because the character played by Jimmy Walker, um, who is doing comedy that people are perceiving to be minstrel comedy, because he gets so popular, 
Both characters, both lead actors, John Amos and Esterol, quit the show because they won't be on the show with him. And then they convince Esterol to come back and promise to change the character. But I mean, that just goes to show they design the show one way and then people react to this minstrelsy in a way that, you know, overpowers it. Well, I mean, I'll just define, I mean, we're using a historical basis. We are looking at minstrel shows and looking at the specific uh, characters and jokes and comedy and things that were specific to these minstrel shows. And that's a very limited definition. Yeah, I mean, I'll just, I'll just tell you, you know, if you want to define classic black minstrelsy, there's a very succinct definition that we have in the book. And it's a comic, lowbrow variety show in which all black troops represent negative stereotypes as authentically black for a white or mixed audience. That's a very succinct definition of the 19th century minstrel show. Now, the, now the, the problem is that when people use the word minstrelsy today, they don't mean that. They, they often use it, Spike Lee, for example, might use it as meaning any presentation of a negative stereotype by African Americans. Or, or even undignified. I mean, as, as seen in his film, any undignified presentation. If right. you watch Bamboozled, which is not a historically accurate recreation of a minstrel show, but it's a very honest reaction to how he felt. You know, I mean, it's a, a really powerful statement. He is, his definition really means anything that assaults black dignity. 